Matthew's Gospel. And I want to begin reading with, with uh, Matthew chapter 1, and I want to begin reading with verse 18. Matthew chapter 1, beginning with verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her, planned to send her away secretly. Um, the Greek word there, send her away, literally means divorce her. So he wasn't going to bring accusation, wasn't going to bring charges like the song said, but was just going to quietly uh, put her away, divorce her. But when he had considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child who has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now all this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son, and they will call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. And Joseph awoke from his sleep and did as the angel of the Lord. I'm going to read that over. And Joseph awoke from his sleep and did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took Mary as his wife, but kept her a virgin till she gave birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. Throughout the Christmas story, there are many wonderful messages. And one of my favorites is, is found in the story of Joseph. I identify with Joseph. He was an ordinary guy, a carpenter. And God catches him up into his purpose and stretches him like crazy. How many of you understand this morning that God uses ordinary people to accomplish extraordinary things? Amen? I'm going to repeat that. God uses ordinary people to accomplish extraordinary things. I love that. It's one of the things I love about the Lord. Here's Joseph, a carpenter who falls in love with a young girl named Mary and is working toward being able to marry her. And suddenly, Joseph finds out that Mary is pregnant. You talk about stretching a guy. Look at verse uh, 18 again. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, in other words, before they had sex, she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her, planned to send her away secretly or divorce her secretly. But when he had considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid. Everybody say, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child who has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Everything is wonderful until all of a sudden, God breaks in upon Joseph's life and scrambles it. Amen? All of the dreams, 
all of the hopes, all the plans that Joseph and Mary had made are wiped away. The eternal plan and purpose of God breaks in upon Joseph's life. And as his life seemingly is coming apart at the seams, an angel suddenly appears to Joseph and says, do not be afraid. Isn't that amazing? Everybody say that, those words again. Do not be afraid. Say it. Do not be afraid. Say it again. Do not be afraid. You see, saints, the greatest enemy of faith is not doubt. The greatest enemy of faith is fear. We are afraid of certain things, especially things that are true, like the purpose of God or the plan of God, or the will of God, or the power of God. In fact, the greatest challenge that you will face in your life every single day, the greatest challenge that you will face in your life every single day will be whether or not you're willing to do God's will. In your marriage, in your family, in your business, in your job, in your ministry. The greatest challenge that you and I will face throughout our lives will be fear of the consequences. Fear of the cost. Fear of the price that you have to pay or I have to pay to do the will of God. Amen? Uh, all of us in this congregation know of people who have left this church out of fear. Right? People who have drawn back out of fear of the price they would have to pay if in order to stay and do the work that they were called to do. I've struggled with this over the years. Not to take it personally. Amen? Amen? You see, we are seeking to do the will of God. And the people who have left this body or left our movement have not left because of me. You know, not, they, they've not left because of, of any uh, fault in my character, although I've got faults, or because of my leadership style, or because of my preaching. Instead, they've left because of Fear of the stigma of our message, the message of the kingdom. Or fear of what God has called us to do in restoring the foundations of authentic Christianity and reforming the church of Jesus Christ. People have left. Is that right? And uh, this may be the great struggle in your own life this morning. You see, your greatest challenge in the, the coming new year will, will be to not become fearful. The greatest challenge in this coming new year will be to not become fearful. The greatest challenge in this coming will be not to become fearful of the plans and the purposes that God has for this church or for your individual life, or for your marriage, or your family, or your business, or your ministry. Amen? In this coming new year, if you and I can learn to overcome fear, we will win in life. Is that not awesome? We'll walk in victory, and we will fulfill our destiny, and our calling in the Lord. What I want you to see this morning is that as Joseph faced the hard facts about Mary's pregnancy, and as he heard the angel Gabriel say to him, do not be afraid, he realized that what was happening 
had in, in his own life had significance far beyond himself. Amen? He understood that what was happening was not just about him. He realized that the situation and the challenge before him was about the will of God. It was about God's kingdom and the eternal plan of the Heavenly Father. And what I want you to see this morning is that what God is doing with the King's Church and with AMCI and with ATS and with the CAC is not just about us. It's not just about you and me. Instead, it's about God and His kingdom. Oh, shucks. You mean this is about God? You see, our great temptation today, just as I'm sure it was Joseph's great temptation, will be to become offended with God. Simply because God is not doing what we want Him to do. Or what we, we are used to seeing Him do. Amen? How many of you understand that Joseph was not used to what was happening to him? You know, think about Joseph this morning. He's in love. Love's a wonderful thing, isn't it, George? He's in love. He's engaged to be married to the darling of his life. And suddenly, Mary becomes pregnant with the Holy Spirit. It's God. This is not the kind of thing that Joseph had hoped for. This was not what Joseph had planned. In fact, Joseph had never even heard of this kind of thing happening to anyone else. No wonder Joseph was confronted and challenged with fear. You see, in Joseph's day, you just did not marry someone who was already pregnant. And certainly not if you knew that the baby that she was carrying was not your own child. Amen? But Joseph heard the angel of the Lord saying in a dream, Fear not, Joseph. I love this. Mary is pregnant by the Holy Spirit. And as a result of the message of the angel, he overcomes his fear. Is that not awesome? My message today is not just for this body for this congregation it's for each one of you as individuals you see we're not doing church as usual at the king's church instead god is breaking in on us for the sake of his kingdom and for the sake of the larger church the body of christ and for this city and for for the the, the work of god around the world the Lord is not doing today what He's done before. Did you hear me? Instead, He's stirring things up, which I love Him for that. And I hope when I'm 180 years old, He'll still be stirring things up. See, what I want you to see is God uses ordinary people like you and like me to do extra that not awesome hallelujah and our comfort is to hear the Lord say to us fear not do not be afraid to accomplish my purpose in your life fear not amen I call this message this morning if you're making notes you want to write this down I call this message overcoming fear and if in this coming new year you and I are to overcome fear. And we're to walk in the miracle of the purpose and the will of God. We need to understand three things. If you're making notes, you want to write these things down. Number one, we need to understand or realize that fearing 
Hear what I'm saying before you write it. We must realize that fearing the purpose of God is understandable. Amen? Fearing God's purpose. Fearing God's will for our lives individually and corporately is understandable. And there are three reasons why it's understandable. The first reason is that it's because the purpose of God, I love this, requires that we release things that we love. God's kingdom purpose. Think of this, church. The will of God for your life. The purpose of God for your life. Individually and for our life together corporately. Requires that we release or give up or surrender things that we love. Wow. Look at Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. She will bear a son. And you will call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Hallelujah. Father was getting his son into the earth. God the Father was getting Jesus, his son, into the earth. His purpose was to bring salvation to the nations. But in order... For this to happen, Joseph was required to release things he dearly loved. Is that not powerful? He had to release the womb of Mary, whom he dearly loved to the plan and the purpose of God. He had to surrender or yield his own desire to have his firstborn be his own personal seed. He had to give up his plan of living an ordinary life. Joseph even had to release his own dreams for his wedding night. Is that not powerful to you? And for you and me, saints, for for you and me to see the purpose of God, the will of God accomplished in in our own lives and in this congregation or for that matter, in in Jacksonville, in our city, Jacksonville, or in our nation, will require that you and I release or give up things that we love. Some of us are going to be required to give up habits. Some of us are going to be required to give up relationships that we love. Comforts that we love plans and dreams that we've made in order to walk out the plans and purposes of God for our lives. Amen? See, don't miss this this morning, church, because God is saying to some of us today, in order for you to fulfill my purpose and my will for your life this new year, you'll have to release or turn loose or surrender things that you love. You see, doing the will of God. Are you breathing? (laughs) You know, you're not going to throw me off if you say amen. Hallelujah. I, I love this message. You might as well have fun with me, all right? Doing the will of God. What I want you to see is that Fearing God's purpose for our lives, fearing his will for our lives is understandable understandable because doing the will of God requires that we release, that we give up, that we surrender things that we love. The second reason fearing the, the will of God or the purpose of God is understandable is that it requires that we rearrange our plans. I love that. It requires that we rearrange our plan. How many know that Joseph had his own plans? And he not only had to release things that he loved, he also had to rearrange his plans. 
the priorities of his life suddenly had to change. He had to leave his home in Nazareth and his carpenter business and his relatives, his family and his friends, even his own country, and he had to go down to Egypt. He had to rearrange his plan. And for you and, and, and me to do the things that God wants us to do in this coming new year will, pro will probably require that we rearrange some plans. Amen? Hallelujah. You see, what I want you to see is that when God moves supernaturally, how many of you want to see God move? How many of you would really like to know God? You'd like to experience his power in your life. But if you need to understand what you're wanting, what you're asking for. Because when God moves supernaturally, he rearranges some things. Amen? He rearranges our plans. Our priorities have to change. You see, when, when you truly begin to see your own need, Help me, Lord. When you and I begin to understand our need of the power of God. How many of you need God to do some things in your life? Ra raise your hand if that's you. Of course, we want him to do it at, uh, at our convenience. Right? But when, uh, what, what, you're, what you're going to discover is that God doesn't do it at our convenience. And uh, when, when you begin to understand your own personal need or the need of, of your members of your family or the needs of, of friends that you know, the needs of others, when, when you begin to, to see or understand or realize the need for miracles or for the power of God, when, when you begin to realize that you can't live without the power of God in your life, you can't live without the miraculous or the supernatural, when you come to understand that, you'll gladly rearrange your plans. Amen? And you'll make whatever changes God requires for you to make. One of the things that it amazes me is how people uh, can, who, who are members of our congregation will avoid Wednesday night. When what we're doing on Wednesday night is, is reaching to God for the release of, his, of the miraculous, the, super, the power of God to change our circumstances, our, our lives. Amen? Hallelujah. What I want you to see is the miraculous will rearrange your plan. Mary gets pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Joseph has to rearrange his plans. Amen? The third reason that fear, fearing the purpose or the will of God is understandable is that it requires, don't miss this, it requires that we re-examine the things we've been taught. How many of you understand that, that Joseph had been taught by his religious tradition that when facing the situation that he faced, remember, He's engaged to a woman who's pregnant with a child that's not his own. And according to his tradition, according to what he had been taught, Joseph had two options. He could put her away privately, divorcing her and giving her back to her family, which is exactly what she was considering or planning on doing. might have been better to wait till a more opportune moment, but who knows. Uh, did you get that first option? He had two options. He could put her away privately, divorcing her or giving her back to her family, which is exactly what he was planning on doing, what he was considering doing. 
The second option was, if he, if he chose to do so, he could have Mary dragged into the street where the members of the, of the Jewish community, community could, would publicly disgrace her by picking up large stones and throwing them at her until her brain was crushed and her body was broken and she had drawn her last breath. And Joseph had been taught some things. Amen? But God gave Joseph a third option. And I love this. Hallelujah. The Lord sent his angel in a dream. And to, to say to him, Joseph, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. I know this is not what you've been taught. But re-examine what you've been taught in light of the fact that Mary is pregnant by the power of the Holy Ghost. By my miracle working power. Amen? Amen. How many of you understand? Joseph knew what he had been taught. But he weighed, he re-examined what he had been taught and weighed what he had been taught by his religious tradition against what he now knew through the angel of the Lord was the will of God. He re-examined what he had believed in light of the angel's revelation of the, the will of God, the purpose of God and the will of God for his life. I started preaching when I was 16. I started pastoring when I was 17. As a young Baptist minister, Southern Baptist. I was taught, how many of you know we've been taught some things? That's what I want you to see. And as a young Baptist minister, I, I was taught that when the canon of the New Testament was completed, that at that point, apostles and prophets ceased. Miracles ceased. Tongues ceased ceased. In fact, I was taught by my denomination. And I'm, not, I'm not attacking them for this. But I was actually taught by my denomination that, if, that anybody who spoke in tongues was demon-possessed. You know, none of you have been taught that, but I was taught that. I was also taught that miracles today are from the devil. That's what I was taught. It was okay to pray for the sick as long as they didn't get healed. Right. <laughs> now, how many of you understand that in light of the scriptures, that's just plain stupid? I mean, the fact of the matter is that the, the, the New Testament reveals that all of the New Testament saints, including Mary, spoke in tongues. And prophesy. Isn't that amazing? Uh, the Apostle Paul wrote in one of his letters, I would that all of you speak in tongues. Would speak in tongues. And he, he encouraged Christians. He, he indicated that in his letter to the, the church at Ephesus, that we all need to keep being filled with the Holy Spirit. Right? And the reason we need to keep on being filled is because we leak. But we need to keep on being filled with the Holy Spirit and we need to speak in tongues. That's amazing to me. Jesus himself declared that any, anyone who believed in him would be able to lay their hands on sick people and the sick would recover. And he, he even said that, that the believer would speak with new tongues. Hallelujah. And in the Gospel of John, in the upper room, Jesus said, Whoever believes in me, the works that I do, shall he do, shall, shall ye do. And greater works than these, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask or desire or command in my name, I will do it. Is that not awesome? The point that I'm getting at is this. In the early 60s, when I came into the move of the Spirit of God, that was before a lot of you were born. 
when I came into the move of God and received the gift of the, of the, the Holy Spirit, the infilling of the Spirit in my own life, I soon discovered that when God's purpose or His will bucks up against your life, you have to re-examine the things you've been taught. Amen? Amen? There's some of you here this morning. You need to re-examine what you've been taught. You need to re-examine what you believe. If, if you're going to, to, uh, to fulfill God's purpose and God's will for your life. But if you're bound in, and determined to hang on to what you've been taught, if you're bullheaded and determined not to change, then you can forget miracles. You can forget the, the power of God, the miraculous or the supernatural in your life. And you can also forget fulfilling God's purpose for your life. Because the will or purpose of God for your life and my life requires the supernatural. It requires the miraculous. It requires the power of God. See, I promise you, church, that when miracles happen, you and I will not be able to wrap our little finite minds around them. Amen? There's no way that, that we can understand the miracles of God with our little peanut-sized brains. I'm not talking about you guys. I'm talking about myself. I'm talking about, you know, to understand the virgin birth, to understand the incarnation, to understand the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, to understand his ascension. Amen? It takes the faith of God or the faith of Jesus, kingdom faith, faith that believes that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God that releases miracles. Amen? So, the first thing I want you to see, if, if we're going to overcome the fear of the, the purpose and will of God for our lives, we need, to un, we need to realize that that fear is understandable. Because the will of God, the purpose of God requires that we... Re, we release or give up things that we love. It requires or demands that we rearrange our plans and our priorities. priorities. And it requires that we re-examine things that we have been taught in order that we might learn the things of God. Amen? Number two. If you're making notes, you want to write this down. Not only is it understandable, but... The second thing is, fearing the purpose of God or the will of God for our lives is also undesirable. I love this. Fearing the purpose of God or the will of God is undesirable. And there are two reasons that I, I want you to see this morning why fear of the will of God is undesirable. And I won't be long on this. The first one, if you're making notes, write it down. The, the, the first reason fear, fearing the will of God is undesirable is because fear distorts reality. Fear distorts reality. Now, don't miss what I'm about to say to you. I want you to really lean into this. Reality was that Mary was pregnant by the Holy Spirit, by the Spirit of God. But fear said, loud and clear, Mary has been with another man. And in our lives, the reality is that by the stripes of Jesus, we have been healed. But fear says, I'm going to die of disease and in great pain. Reality says, all my children are taught of the Lord. And great is their peace. But fear says, my child will never repent. 
and walk with God. His rebellion is too great. Reality says, I'm married in the Lord. And my spouse and I will live out our days in love and honor and respect for each other. We will enjoy our life together in the Lord. But fear says, I need to fight for my rights. I need to stand up for myself. I need to not give an inch. I need to demand that my rights and my needs be met by my spouse. Reality says, I have the mind of Christ. Is that not awesome? I have the mind of Christ. But fear says, I think I'm going crazy. Amen. Reality says, the love of God is shed abroad in my heart, enabling me to love anyone at any time. But fear says, I'll never be able to forgive that person for what they've done to me. Reality says, my God shall meet all of my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. But fear says, I will never have enough. God has let me down. Reality says, Jesus always leads me in victory. But fear says, I will never succeed in life. Or my kids will never get to go to college. Or this church will never change. It will never grow. It's going to fail. See, I could go on and on. But the point of it all is that fear of the, the purpose of God or the will of God is undesirable. Because it distorts reality. The second reason fear is undesirable is that it destroys relationships. It destroys relationships. Fear destroys relationship. It destroys our relationship with God. You see, we often feel distance from God because of fear of what He wants us to do. We're afraid of Him, or we're afraid of His will for our lives. Or we fear that we'll never be good enough to please Him. But not only that, church, fear not only destroys our relationship with God, it destroys our relationship with one another. Many married couples allow fear of losing their identity in marriage. Or fear of being taken advantage of by their mate. Or fear of not being respected or not being loved alienate them from their mate to such a degree that their relationship is completely destroyed. Not only that, some of us just can't allow people around us to experience God. We can't allow them to experience a miracle or enter into God's will and purpose for their lives because we're full of fear. Well, I'm not sure I want him to change. If God touches her, she might become a different kind of person. Good. <laughs> kind, gentle, or on fire for God. Or if God touches this church, everything will be different. Are you hearing me? See, I, I would not be surprised that at certain times, I'm talking about those deep, dark times in our lives. When we think about the purpose of God, some of us may actually fear what God is calling this church to do. I'm afraid of what that might mean. And in those dark times, we allow fear to undermine or destroy our relationship with one another. Fearing God's purpose, His will, His purpose is undesirable because it distorts reality and it destroys relationship, not only with God, but with one another. Finally, number three. I'm talking about big number three. Fearing the purpose or the will of God is not only undesirable, 
or un uh, understandable and undesirable. It's also unnecessary. Fearing the purpose of God or the will of God is unnecessary. Amen? So how do we stay out of fear, church? Quickly. If you're making notes, you'll want to write these down. There are three things that make fear unnecessary. Three things that you and I must do if we're going to overcome the fear of the will or the purpose of God. Number one. First thing is we must be sensitive, I love this, we must be sensitive to the work of God in our lives. We must be sensitive not only to the work of the Holy Spirit, as in the case of Joseph and Mary, we must also be sensitive to the work of God's providence in ordering our circumstances and directing our, our steps. Amen? Amen? You see, by the Holy Spirit, God was doing, I love this, God was doing something wonderful in Joseph's life. Amen? Hallelujah. By the Holy Spirit, I want you to get this, God was doing something wonderful in Joseph's life. Even though, at first, Joseph may have thought that the enemy, that Satan was seeking to disrupt and destroy his life. Don't you know that's how he felt in the beginning? Joseph had to become sensitive to the fact that what was happening to him was the work of the Holy Spirit. That indeed, the, the Holy Spirit had come upon Mary and that the child that she had conceived was of the Spirit of God. Is that not awesome? You see, the Lord may be doing something in your life this morning that is disrupting your life. Amen? You may even feel that what, the, what God is doing by His Spirit or by His providence is destroying your life. Or God may begin to do something in this coming new year that will disrupt your life. But what I want you to see is that if you and I are going to overcome fear, the fear of God's purpose, the fear of his will, then it's important that we recognize who it is that's working in our lives, either by his spirit or by his providence. Amen? It's important for us to be sensitive to the work of God. Are you aware? How, how many of you here know God is working in your life? Raise your hand. You know it. You know his, he's, he's speaking to you by the Spirit. He's leading you by... Or you know he's, he's dealing with you through his providence. It's important for you and I to be aware when God is doing something wonderful or something new in our lives. You know, we're living in a, a new season as a body. Amen? God's bringing us into a whole new season as a church. And we're getting ready to enter into a new year, 2011. And what I want you to see is that the thing that God has promised, he's bringing to pass. Amen. Hallelujah. So don't give in to fear in the face of the unusual or the miraculous or the unknown. Number two, if fear is going to be unnecessary or if we're going to overcome fear of the will of God in our lives this coming year. The second thing is, not only must we be sensitive to God's work in our lives, we must also be serious, I love this, serious about His Word. Don't you love that? If, if we're going to overcome the fear of God's will in our lives, and if fear is going to be unnecessary, we must be not only be sensitive to his work in our life, we must also be serious about his word. How many, how many of you understand that when God speaks, something wonderful happens? Is that not awesome? Hallelujah. No, the scriptures say God's word is, is powerful. 
and that when, when he sends his word, it doesn't come back to him void. It will accomplish the thing that he sent it forth to accomplish. When God speaks, something wonderful happens. Gabriel, the archangel, speaks the word of God and delivers Joseph of fear. Is that not awesome? Look at verses 22 and 23. Now all of this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. I love this. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. Hallelujah. What I want you to see is Gabriel quotes from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 7, verse 14. And Joseph remembers the prophecy of Isaiah. He said, oh yeah, a virgin. Hey, Mary is the virgin. My Mary is the virgin that I've heard about all of my life. And once God's word begins to be revealed to Joseph, the word of God overcomes Joseph's fear. My Mary. Wow. My Mary is the promised virgin. Joseph understands the word and fear departs. Why does it depart? God's word gave Joseph comfort. God's word gave Joseph confidence. God's word gave Joseph the courage that he needed to deny himself and embrace God's purpose and do God's will. My Mary. I love that. My Mary. This is fantastic. This is amazing. This is great. This is fabulous. Hallelujah. My Mary is the virgin. And God's word delivers Joseph from fear. If in this coming new year, you and I are going to overcome fear, talking about the fear, uh, fearing God's will for our lives or fearing God's purpose for our lives. Then like Joseph, we must be sensitive to the work of God in our lives and we must be serious about his word. The promises God has made to us. How many of you here have, have a promise you're believing for? R raise your hand if you, you're believing God for something. Hallelujah. We must be serious about his, 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 the word of God to our lives. And finally, if, if fear of the will of God is going to become unnecessary and we're going to overcome fear individually and corporately, the third thing we must see is we must learn to be selfless. Selfless, I love this. Selfless, everybody say selfless. selfless. Say it again. Selfless. selfless in our response to God's work and his word. Amen? We must learn to be selfless in our response. Look at Matthew chapter 1, verses 24 and 25. And Joseph awoke from his sleep and did. Everybody say did. Did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took Mary as his wife, but kept her a virgin until she gave birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. Hallelujah. I love that. Joseph awoke, he arose, and he took Mary to be his wife. Is that not awesome? In spite of the consequences he might face, in spite of what it might cost him, in spite of what the people around him would think or say or do, Joseph denies self and rises from sleep and does what the Lord commanded him to do. Is that not amazing? Hallelujah. That, to me, that is so awesome. But not only does he deny himself and does what the Lord commanded him to do, Joseph keeps Mary as a virgin. <laughs> That's amazing. He keeps her a virgin until she gives birth to the only begotten Son of God. Joseph not only chooses to disregard the consequences 
that he will face for marrying Mary, who's pregnant by the Spirit of God. He also chooses to deny himself the joy of his conjugal rights, keeping her a virgin until she gives birth to Jesus, the Savior. Hallelujah. Is that not awesome? See, the Lord is saying to each one of us this morning, if anyone seeks to save his life, he will lose it. If anyone, this is what Jesus said, if anyone seeks to save his life, he will lose it. It's the fear of the will of God that causes us to seek to save our life instead of losing it in surrender. If anyone loses his life, Jesus said, if anyone loses his life for my sake, he will find. How many of you want to find life in this coming new year? Some of you are, are saying to me this morning, Bishop, you mean there will be times when I will need to lose my life for the sake of the Lord Jesus and his kingdom? Golly, Bishop. You mean Christianity is not just about me? My needs, my desires, my plans, my will? You mean the Christian life is really about Jesus? About His purpose, His will for my life? Bishop, you mean I must learn to be selfless in my response? of God's work in my life and his word to my life. Saints, this morning as we look forward to a new year, you looking forward to it? Amen. You and I must pay attention to what God is doing in our life. How many of you are aware God's at work? Yeah, He's doing some things. And we must, we must pay attention to what he's saying to us, individually and corporately. And like Joseph, we must learn to be selfless in our response to God's work in us and his word to us. Because the Christian life, I love this, true Christianity is not about you and me. It's about the Lord Jesus and his kingdom, and his plan, his purpose to save nations. Not just individual souls, but cities and nations. And to establish righteous judgment, justice, and peace, and to fill all things with the glory of the kingdom of God. See, we belong to him. I talked about that last week. We've been bought with a price. And this is the Lord's church. Amen? It's not my church. It's not your church. It's his church. And not only do you and I belong to him, our families belong to him. Our children. I love that. Our children, our time, our energy, our strength, our money, our talent, our creativity, everything belongs to him. And if you and I will approach life that way in this new year, then just like Joseph, we will overcome fear, the fear of his purpose, the fear of doing his will in our life. We will overcome fear and we will succeed. Amen? Amen. I want you to bow your heads. Every head bowed, every eye closed. How many of you will say this morning, uh, Bishop, I'm struggling with the purpose of God for my life. You know, God's purpose for my life, for my family, scares me. If that's you, raise your hand. I want to pray for you. 
Amen. Several. Don't be embarrassed. It's understandable. Amen. Fear of his will is, is understandable. If you understand, if, if you know what, what God is expecting of what he's wanting for your life. It's understandable. But it's also then undesirable. Keep you from entering in and fulfilling your calling and your destiny. And it's unnecessary. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's purpose. I'm I'm struggling with the purpose of God for my His purpose for my life and for my family scares me. If that's you, raise your hand. Anybody else? ask you all to stand and I want to pray for you. Just everybody stand. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Just lift your hands to the Lord as I pray. Father, I pray for each one in this assembly this morning. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I lift up the name of Jesus over each one individually and all of us corporately. And in the name of Jesus, I take authority over fear and doubt and unbelief. And I bind you off of everyone here in the name of Jesus. And in Jesus' name, I release faith. Just lift your hands and receive faith. Receive it. An impartation of grace. I release grace today. Hallelujah. And faith to believe. The faith of God. God's faith, the faith of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I speak peace. I say to you, be not afraid. Be not afraid. Hallelujah. And Father, I pray now that you will, will work so mightily by your spirit and by your providence and that you will establish us with your word in such a way that none of us will miss out on your will and your purpose for our lives. I ask this, Father, in Jesus' name.